Thank you, Michael, for being with us. How would you define strategy? What is strategy in very simple terms? Well, in very simple terms, it's what's going to make uh, a particular organization different and provide a competitive advantage. Uh, basically, uh, competition is destructive when companies are basically competing on the same thing. That forces competition to gravitate to price. Uh, strategy is, is finding a different way to compete uh, to create a different sort of value for the customer which allows a company to prosper to achieve superior profit. What is not strategy? Uh, simply implementing best practices, uh, buying the latest machine, uh, uh, using the internet to communicate with your customers. There, there are lots of things that managers do that they have to do to actually keep making the company more productive and more efficient and, and, and to attain the kind of latest technology and knowledge about management. All those things are a necessity, but they're not strategy. Strategy is not about doing the same thing better. Uh, strategy is about finding that different place for the organization to deliver value. But what, what makes it challenging is you have to do both of these things at the same time. You've got you to keep assimilating best practices, but at the same time having real clarity about what's going to make you different. You wrote a book 25 years ago that has remained uh, at the top of the list of the strategy books. What were the key messages in that book? Well, you know, I've written a number of books about strategy. I, I think the, 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 my first really major book on strategy was a book called Competitive Advantage, and I think the really major message of that was really how to look at the industry in which you compete and how to think about what causes industry profitability and how, by understanding that, a company can improve its, its own position. Um, in that book, I introduced the so-called five forces framework, that in any industry you've got to look at the power of the customer, the power of the supplier, the barriers to entry, uh, the threat of substitute products, and the nature of the rivalry itself, and that those five forces collectively define uh, really the profit potential of any business. And, and, and this was, a, I think, a, a breakthrough in, in, in the field because really we had no systematic way of looking at industries. Uh, uh, the next book I uh, was a book called Competitive Advantage in which I really talked about how to look at a company's own position and introduce the concept of the value chain. Um, any company, when it competes, uh, is, is simply conducting a lot of activities, uh, marketing activities, procurement activities, service activities, and so forth, and the value chain provided a framework for understanding how a particular company was uh, competing uh, versus its competitors and therefore sharpening the distinctions in terms of its position. I, I would also say that uh, equally important to the first two books is, a, is an article called What is Strategy, which really tried to get at the fundamental distinction between strategy Someone, and Some and people would challenge the concept of industry. Yes. If you take, for example, this device, what industry is it? Is it phone? Is it a computer business? Mm -hmm. Or even a restaurant? Yeah. Is it in the food business, in the entertainment business? Mm -hmm. More and more, the boundaries of industries are less clear. Would you agree with that? Or? Well, I, I'd, I'd say that the boundaries of industries can certainly evolve and shift and change. Uh, I, I'm not sure that they're not clear. At any given point in time, um, by, by thinking about you know, fundamental economics, we, we, need to, we need to draw a set of boundaries at that moment. Um, and so what we call the phone before, is the, that industry definition is probably now a broader definition. Okay. Um, now... Whenever we look at an industry and whenever we look at, at how companies compete, um, we've got to always be sensitive to, you know, where are the right boundaries and, and, and how are those boundaries evolving. What I have found, for whatever it's worth, is that industry boundaries change less and more slowly than some authors would have us believe. Okay. Uh, some authors would have us believe that every business is constantly restructuring itself every day. And, and, and there are some, and, and, and they tend to be concentrated in the technology space. You yeah. pulled out a, a BlackBerry, and, and, and I think that's a little bit of a, of a, of a you know, sort of a loaded example, if you will. Uh, that said, even in industries as mundane as distributing food, uh, one can see... What do you think sure. about um, the new social networks, the, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, 
What are the implications of these uh, phenomena? I can tell you that that they really have changed the way that young people, you know, particularly younger people, relate and communicate with each other. Um, and there's lots of related ideas like blogs and, and, and various other devices to uh, to, to communicate. Um, and, and I think that, that that application is 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 undoubtedly going to at least persist for 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 the for the foreseeable future. What is less clear is how those forms of communication are actually going to work their way into what I would call the mainstream economy yes. and, and, and mainstream business. Um, because I, I think that um, um, it's, it's not clear how they, they, they connect in some, in some very clear way to value creation or commerce or what, what people will integrate into their work as opposed to their leisure time. So, or even can, can you read their strategy because they don't charge? I mean, it's hard to see how they will yeah. sustain. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a little bit like the Internet bubble. That is, you know, gee whiz, look at what we can do. Look at all the people that use it. But ultimately, if nobody's willing to pay and there's not some kind of a way of, of really realizing the value, then, then, then ultimately you, you don't have a sustainable phenomenon. You know, for every 100 Internet companies, there were probably only two that survived. And, and that was because only those two were doing something that really could capture the value they were creating.